Well, well now joining us is now is the former Home Secretary, Lord Reid. Uh, Lord Reid, the, uh, the effect of something like this, um, even though it's across the Atlantic, and our, the proximity of our two very big events, people are thinking again, aren't they here? Yes, I think, and I think they're obliged to. Uh, I mean, we uh, have authorities, intelligence service, police, which for 30, 40 years have had experience of terrorism, Pyra, then uh, Islamic terrorism. They are used to big events. They will have prepared for it because the sort of template that you have for a royal wedding, though it sounds bizarre to say it is a framework that you can use for a major funeral and so on. So well, you'd have you've the template, but on the other hand, two days before it, you get this. That, absolutely. This you is have to the, go so having, it again. Having done all this, um, events, dear boy, as Harold McMillan says, mm. so you're obliged to go back to it and look at it again and test all your, um, you know, in this case, presumably litter bins, shop access, um, you know, where people could move, could hide, and just make sure to the nth degree that you, you've got your plans stacking up. But in a sense, that's all very well for what is in fact a limited area to police for Mrs Thatcher's funeral. But then you go to a 26-mile marathon course and you've got a real headache. They, they, there is big differences. On the one hand, with Mrs Thatcher's funeral, you have uh, soldiers, mm. military involved, which obviously adds to the target. On the other hand, by definition, a funeral is very hard to predict in advance. Hmm. Uh, and terrorists tend to like an event, which yeah. is a fixed date in so the calendar. So they might have had the forward planning. Whereas the marathon would have been in that, mm. yes. So the, the, the task uh, of the marathon is, as you say, is probably uh, of a greater magnitude because of the length, 26 hmm. odd miles, 500,000 people, 35,000 plus uh, athletes. The problem is that uh, the rational mind, that of the planner for the security, is having to deal with an irrational mind. It you've is. Got to, you've got to guess the activities and thought processes of somebody who's balmy. And that's why when you do these exercises and you do your planning, you always have to red team it. So someone else will sit across from you, as it were, uh, and go through and contradict and object and find ways around your planning. And that process is meant to add to your planning. And this goes right the way up. Even the, the complexity of your command and control, when you're trying to bring in some of the elements you've been discussing in this programme, where you're fusing the intelligence and the information together, where you're bringing in MI5, MI6, perhaps defence intelligence with the Metropolitan Police, where you're bringing in the intelligence and the operations together, the actual command and control on the day has to be tested as well. John Reid, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you.